G'day, I'm Murray. This is my backyard. And I've got half a dozen Moringa trees that I need to get planted. One of those places I'm planting them is here. I have to move these bales forward. I'm gonna put in two Moringa trees in about a, oh, about a four yard long bed. And I'm gonna put in another four over the other side of the banana trees. Here's the plan. These are the mulch pits, or manure pits. I want to be able to get a mower through between here and here. I'm going to bring these forward a bit, I don't know about here, and they're going to back right onto the garden edging. The garden edging, logs, various lengths, and I've got more that I can get a hold of. Two moringas. about three yards apart. I've got a little bit of a change of plans here because everything here is so dead. The, the garden bed and edging are pretty much solely so that we don't have to try and mow around these trees up close. And the mower likes nice long straight edges to mow against. But, so it doesn't have to be particularly white. No, it can be quite narrow, but I can put some tillage radish in the middle here. Tillage radish are a soil improver, and not worry about the cardboard, grow the radish crop, let them cut off the tops of the radishes, let them die, rot down, and when I cut them down, throw the cardboard on top and mulch on top of that and that will provide nutrients. Not that Moringa need a lot of nutrients, but why not, since I've got tillage radish seeds anyway. That's my thinking. A little bundle of prettiness has just joined me. That was surprisingly quick and painless. I've done this end like this because that board plus about that width is going to equal that width. So yep, I got lucky there a couple of times, I think. Now, if I'm going to put tillage radish in the middle here and then lay the cardboard over it, I had planned to tack these logs together, there to there sort of thing, and at each juncture. And I'm not going to do that until after everything is sorted out. So after the radish has grown, if they grow, after I've cut them down for mulch, and then I'll dump cardboard on top of them. And real mulch on top of that. Okay, that's the plan. I could probably plant those trees now.
it might tell you just how dull I really am that I'm excited about this. This is a very interesting little project. I mean, I'm very interested in exploring these radish. Tillage radish, very interesting. Cut them back, let them rot, fertilize the soil. They draw up nutrients from deep down. It could be fantastic. I, strain, I, I wasn't planning on it, but then it occurred to me with the fact that all of this has been killed. And yeah, I am in a conundrum though, because that Moringa up the end there came out with so few roots. Do I plant the other four out the side or not? That's where I'm at at the moment. But if I plant four out the side and that one dies, I can take a cutting off something and plant another Moringa here. Nah, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I think I'll do the four. Yep. Okay, well, time to pack up. This is not where they're going to go. They're going to go over that way further. This is to give me a guide. I'm going to be putting the bed in over here, say. And got you close-ish on top of the bed so that it's a bit handier. My shrewd and cunning plan involves this stuff. Not always easy to get out, but always useful. The more I use this stuff, the more I realize you can use it for everything. So, two screws, got it there. This is the first time I've done this, so it's a bit of a proof of concept. But it should work, I can't think of why it wouldn't. Right. I was thinking I'd have to dig trenches for all of these to stop them rolling around. And then I got lazy smart. I hope. So if I do this all the way down, Okay, I'm going to do this patch here, then I'm going to put cardboard under it, then I'm going to work on the next bit. I don't know how easy it's going to be to get cardboard underneath this once I've stuck them together, so I might hold off on it further down, but I'm just trying to work out how this is going to go. And it's positive so far. Except I'm going to run out of small screws.
I can of course always come back later and whack another screw in these guys <sighs> in each side and that should hold it more stable if um but this is going to have a little bit of give for the mower and hopefully come back to its natural resting place because it'll be screwed all the way down okay cardboard time Well, that's nearly halfway. When it's halfway between these two plants down the right, it'll be halfway. It's going really well, really fast. Getting all the tools together is what took quite a lot of time. But this won't show up in camera, but I haven't had to go anywhere and get any tools. I've actually got one tool in excess of what I need for this. So this is really awesome, but I'm going to have to go and water the nursery and pack up here and come back again tomorrow. I'll just chuck some logs on the cardboard and leave that out overnight, but the rest of the tools and the plants themselves have to get packed up for the night, and they're due to be watered over there too. Really happy with this. A bit of extra thinking time, and it's made this job a lot easier than it could have been. So, mm. and that strapping, that metal strapping. I've actually, this was a 15 metre roll. I've gone and I've bought a 30 metre roll. I haven't finished this obviously, it's quite a few metres left. But I was so keen not to run out of it, I went and bought a larger roll just to have a backup. It, it's just awesome for so many things. Not sure what it was designed for, but it's good for everything. Loving it. Moringa is a tree native to northern India. It's also called the drumstick tree because it's got these long seed pods that look a bit like drumsticks. The seed pods are eaten in curries in southern India and through Southeast Asia. Usually when they're quite young, they get woody and hard as they get older. The seeds can be crushed and processed into an oil called ben oil b-e-n it's a very good long-lasting vegetable oil the seeds are extremely light though i believe they're about 40 percent oil by weight but they're so light i think you'd have to do a lot of seeds to get any oil but nonetheless they are processed into oil the leaves are considered a superfood they are often dried and made into moringa powder the fresh moringa leaves have a protein content of around six to seven percent and the dried leaf powder because the moisture has been taken out of it is usually between 25 and 30 percent protein moringa leaves contain a raft of handy vitamins and minerals they're high in vitamin c potassium they're really good for you. You can use the leaves fresh in stir fries, throw them in, stuff like that. Yeah, the powder can be added to muffins, breads, anything like that, anything that you could add flour to. 
but I believe it's recommended you only have about a teaspoon a day of the powder. I'm not quite sure why that is, but it's something to look into if you're going to be using the powder. The fresh leaves also have healthy doses of amino acids in them. So this is really a wonderful plant. It's drought hardy. At least it's drought hardy when it's grown from seed and that may be because of the lignotuber. The cuttings may not be as drought hardy as a plant grown from seed. I'm pretty sure cuttings won't develop a lignotuber. So it might be best to grow from seed. I'm going to have a look at how these things progress and I'm probably going to start the next ones from seed. Okay, that was a little summary of what Moringa is. Five out of six of these were grown from cuttings. And I really thought when I, I took the cuttings, I was off a branch, I, I thought that the younger ones would do best. And I kind of planted these old woody chunks just to see if they'd grow and I'm really impressed older wood much better strike rate than the younger wood so I lost a heap of thin cuttings and I got some of these I planted a heap just to see what would work for next time so if you're trying to grow moringa by cuttings old wood seems to be much better this is a seedling the only seedling that I'll be planting. It has a lignotuber. This is about 18 months old, died off last winter and came back. Really should have had it in the ground a while and the soil level should be up here, but it's settled down from being in the pot too long. Now, I don't know if the cutting growing plants are going to develop lignotubers. I somehow doubt it. Lignotubers help plants survive drought and harsh conditions and they will reshoot from the tuber as you can see here last year's lead this year's leads the, the following seasons so there may be advantages to growing from cuttings and advantages to growing from these because the cutting trees may be easier to permanently remove when you're done with them equally they may not be as resilient as a tree with its own lignotuber. These may keep growing back no matter how many times you cut them down. I'm not sure yet. I haven't done any reading on it. I'm going to have a look and learn from experience.
This bed was put in four days ago. And this guy's starting to look yellow and sick. We'll have to see how it goes. Some of the radishes, the first of them are starting to come up. There's a fair few down here. This one at the end though looks pretty good. Mm. My hat got soggy in the rain the other day, it still looks stupid. We'll have to see how they go. These may be best planted directly in the ground with older woodier cuttings. I'll find out. I might have a bit of a wait to try some more cuttings because we're headed into winter. These in cooler climates lose all their leaves in winter, I believe. So we'll have to wait and see. Kookaburra. Um, yeah, so the purpose of this, as I said, was just to make mowing easier around where these are going in. I don't need this many moringa trees. It's possible I could, if some of these fail, I could put... Hmm. I could put something else in that is suitable. Probably a legume of some kind. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. And I'm just going to stop me there. It's been six weeks since I started building Moringa beds. I've been really busy and haven't got around to editing it and posting it. And my hat's got a bit flatter. I've put a really heavy dictionary on it. But I can give you an update now, six weeks after the project started. It's the middle of June and the radish have grown. Moringa is deciduous but it hasn't lost its leaves yet. We may be warm enough that it's not going to lose its leaves. It's going to be getting down to seven overnight though. Okay, three rows. I have thinned the first two rows and not the third one. I got really sick of thinning rows. If you have a little look down here, these may be too close together. I don't know. I haven't really started to set roots yet. This is a daikon radish, the tillage radish. Lots of variety of diaper. Huh? And these moringa trees are both still alive. Radish is doing well. And yeah, it's getting crowded in here. There's no room in here for weeds. Okay, to the other bed. I've only mowed around this bed once so far. Worked well. Still alive. A few branchlets have died for some of these plants. Still alive. Still alive. Now, when they're going to lose their leaves, I don't know. And this is the seedling. So the wood has taken a few little bangs from the mower and it pretty much straightened itself out again. I'm very happy with how it's going. I don't see any need to put extra screws in at the moment because it's kind of hinged. So tillage radish are planted in autumn, early autumn in the US, with the view that they're going to get killed by winter and then rot over winter when you don't plant anything anyway. I've got a funny feeling our winter temperatures are like US autumn temperatures in some parts of the US where mid 20s to uh, between about 23 and 28 degrees celsius as a top and six or seven at a bottom and that's pretty mild so i figured the radish should do okay planted over our winter i mean there's cold parts of australia where they might not work but that's my theory until i test it how will i know I'll give you updates as events warrant.
I don't know if the Moringa are going to survive. I don't know how well the radish are going to do, but I'll get back to you in a few months. I've got another radish experiment going on. And yeah, I'll let you know what's happening there in due course too. So now back to slightly younger me. Have a good one.